Good evening. It is Monday, September 29th, 2025. We're keeping a close eye on Tropical Storm Imelda as winds have increased to now 65 miles an hour as this is now moving off the coast of our last round of Bahama Islands here to the north. Just passed just to the east of Great Abaco early this morning and is now over the Atlantic Ocean once again where it can now intensify a little faster as it is in a pretty conducive environment. This is a closer zoomed in view on Tropical Storm Imelda and as we can see the system has shown better signs of organization over the last 24 hours and now we are beginning to see possibly what appears to be a inner core structure that is trying to get well established here. We can see in the last few frames here before the sun sets we have an explosion of deep convection that is trying to wrap around on the up shear side of the system. That would be the southern side here because we do have a little bit of southerly shear encroaching onto the system. Even so, it doesn't look a whole lot of wind shear. We look at the cloud filaments down here to the south. You can see a little bit of vertical wind shear is present here. Look very closely. You can see some of the Sears clouds doing this which indicates the presence of about 20 to 25 knots of vertical wind shear over the system, probably even a little lighter given the system that is showing signs of organization. But just so you know, there is a little bit of vertical wind shear here at the moment. And then when we zoom out here and look at the water vapor imagery, there is also the presence of dry deep layer air that is encroaching onto the southern side of the system. We talked about this yesterday in yesterday's video, how this punch of drier air that is in the deep south would eventually migrate and catch underneath where Imelda is. And that has since been the case today where we have this darker shade of gray now encroaching onto the southern side of the system with that effect of deep layer vertical wind shear giving us this asymmetrical appearance where we have a lot of good outflow exhaust on the northern side of the system as we can see here which is a good optimal position for Imelda to strengthen within. But at the same time, with the presence of some of this drier air with the vertical wind shear intact onto the system, there could be some brief disruptions of the inner core formation throughout the next couple of days as the system tries to fight off this drier air. Now, as we talked about in yesterday's video, the steering pattern is more straightforward today than what we had the last couple of days since we now know where Imelda actually is in retrospect of where Major Hurricane Humberto is, which is still a formidable Category 4 hurricane with 140 mile an hour winds this afternoon. So we can see the players on the field. Imelda is right here underneath a weakness in the subtropical ridge like pattern. We have this nice good deep layer ridge off to the east of Humberto, which is helping to guide the system generally northward. But the system is going to make this sharp turn to the northwest event or northeast eventually as it rounds the northwestern periphery of that subtropical high that is pretty much over Bermuda and just to the east. But the problem with this pattern is Humberto is also causing some weaker heights over Imelda, helping the system to pretty much drift northward at the very moment. But once Humberto gets more firmly established within this westerly type flow, or what is known as the background steering westerlies that is going to be um, getting impacted by, this is going to allow Imelda to follow out to sea with Humberto. So basically, these two systems will follow each other. Well, actually, Imelda will follow Humberto as Humberto is the leader of the pack and moves generally off towards the east-northeast eventually. And we can see this evolution happening on the GFS over the next 30 hours where we have the system that is generally safely to the northeast of Bermuda. But that's when um, Imelda will not avoid Bermuda. So while you got away with Humberto uh, being a formidable hurricane, bringing tropical storm force winds, I'm afraid to say that Imelda is going to bring more significant impacts to Bermuda. And hurricane watches are already issued for that island because of where um, the GFS has it. And you can see right here, if I'm lucky enough to get a closer sector here, and I'm not able to get one, unfortunately. Um, but you can see here is Bermuda on the map right there. That dot, that black dot is where Bermuda is. And the GFS brings us directly over the island of Bermuda. 
This has been pretty consistent over the last several model runs where it has had it pretty much only timing differences, but having it pretty much squarely over Bermuda during this time frame. So that is why forecasts today have been much more consistent on a landfall or a very, very close call, either just north of the island within a few miles or just south of Bermuda Island within a few miles. That's where we are at pretty much at this point. The only exception to this forecast is when we look at the European model, same plot system, it is a little further south, and that's likely due to the fact that it shows um, Humberto a little bit further to the north, so that then allows a little bit of a lesser um, weakness in the subtropical, well, whatever trough there is here between the two systems is not as much of a tug like the GFS is showing. And so that's why the Euro here has this system just to the south of Bermuda, but still awfully close to comfort. And so just how close could this actually get to the Bermuda Island here over the next 60 or so hours? Well, looking at Bermuda here on Weather Bell, you can clearly see I've outlined this island very well, so you know where to look at the very center of your screen for anyone that is watching this from Bermuda on Imelda. And we can see where the circulation here is just to the south of the island of Bermuda, probably within five or six miles away from that area. But the problem here is because this is going to be meeting up with a, a basically with a cold front that is going to be draping across the area, there is going to be some barrel clinic dynamics that this system gets involved with. We're not looking at extratropical tr uh, transition just yet here, but there is going to be some frontal features here which allow a sting jet to potentially develop here. And there are some pretty good possibilities that this is going to unfortunately happen right before or right on top of Bermuda. So what a steam jet actually is, is when you get colder air rushing in from the north and you get a lot of warm air trying to rush in from the south. And what you get here is barotropic or barrel or isotropic ascent and isotropic descent on the backside. That means colder air being transported from the mid levels of the atmosphere because the air mass is overall colder on the northern side of these types of setups. And then that air wants to descend and accelerate downward helping to increase the steam jet future that we're seeing here. And this is pretty strong. This is 90 to even 100 mile an hour winds. So even so that this may have winds overall of 90 miles an hour, don't be surprised if you get caught off guard with some very damaging wind gusts here of over 100 to 120 miles an hour over the small island here of Bermuda. And the winds do look to still increase here. Uh, up to even 100 plus miles an hour. So that is the risk here. And again, just how close this gets, this is going to be very, very close enough to have hurricane conditions expected on the island. And you can even see this from the Euro, not as strong of a steam jet like future over the island, but still this center is not far offshore. In fact, this may be a little bit of an air with where the center actually is. It looks to be more right here with the lightest winds. And boy, that is not far offshore by any means. Now that we talked about the track and how close this could actually be threatening Bermuda over the next 60 or so hours, we're going to be talking about our intensity with Imelda because that's going to be on everybody's mind is how strong could this get before it undergoes some extratropical transition just to the east of Bermuda over the next 72 hours. And so looking at the deep layer moisture plot once again here, you can see all of this green here, a indication that we have a lot of moisture in the deep layers of the atmosphere, this tongue of drier air wrapping in on the southern side of Imelda. That is why we have a lack of deep convection on that side of the system right now. But putting this into motion, you can see Imelda is going to be racing pretty much to the east northeast at a pretty good speed here. And what it's going to do here is with the upper level pattern in a pretty good configuration um, that allows for strengthening. This is going to allow Imelda to still strengthen despite vertical wind shear that is going to be over the system. So we again, we have this green area that indicates a lot of moisture and some of that green and deep layer moisture could actually wrap in on the up shear side of the system. And if that occurs momentarily, this could allow some deepening of Imelda over the course of the next couple of days. And on this model run, it is at 974 millibars. If we go back to prior model runs. We can see this was a lot deeper, so there is still some adjusting, adjustments to be made with the intensity. 
But right now on the latest GFS, this is down to about 974 millibars. And some further deepening is possible here, but it really will depend on how effective the deep layer vertical wind shear is and how much dry air actually punches in. But just so you know here that even so this might end up being 75 to maybe 95 miles an hour over Bermuda, let's not forget about that sting jet that we were talking about that can make things a lot more significant than what the actual intensity is from the National Hurricane Center. And of course, a strengthening or stronger hurricane than currently predicted means all the difference between you having a two or three foot of storm surge or up to maybe seven or eight feet of storm surge on some of the estuaries here on Bermuda. All right, so keep that in mind. This is going to be a pretty significant situation and anybody in Bermuda needs to be taking this very seriously since you're on that small island. And of course, only the way the only way to evacuate is by catching an airplane or taking a boat. Well, if you take a boat, you would have to take one now and get away from Bermuda as quick as you can if you do take a boat. But if you're flying out today and tomorrow are the days to do so um, because of this incoming storm. All right. So therefore, um, this is the latest official uh, from the um, from the ensembles from the Google DeepMind AI forecast. We can see where Bermuda is in relation. And right here, yes, uh, most of the ensembles are aiming basically squared towards Bermuda. I think that's Bermuda, right? I want to make sure. It's very hard to tell, but I believe that little black spot there very hard to see is Bermuda somewhere in here kind of buried underneath with all these spaghetti plots. But the fact that you don't see Bermuda here on your screen because of all these ensembles means, well, Bermuda is barricaded underneath these members. And most of these are showing a fairly strong system of 80 knots, even 90 knots, which would be category two intensity on Imelda. And then of course, Humberto is going to avoid the picture of Bermuda safely, but that does not mean you won't get tropical storm force winds there, which you are still expecting to get some tropical storm force winds, including some wind gusts as well, because Humberto's wind field is also going to be expanding. Looking at the European ensemble forecast, most of the members are to the south of the overall guidance here from what I'm about to show you from the National Hurricane Center. So again, please take this seriously if you're on Bermuda. The last thing we want to have is fatalities because people were not prepared in time for Imelda as Imelda is going to be probably a Category 2 hurricane on approach to that island, and that is pretty strong. So... Here's the look, or here's basically the latest official forecast on from the National Hurricane Center on Tropical Storm Imelda. Winds are at 65 miles an hour, but keep in mind this is going to strengthen pretty appreciably over the next two to three days as this makes a turn to the east-northeast. We're already beginning to see that happening as we speak when we looked at the latest satellite images that this turn is already beginning to occur. So any threats over the South Carolina, North Carolina coast and Georgia do not look very likely now, although some marginal risk for flooding along the immediate coast is possible due to some moderate to heavy rainfall and a little bit of coastal impacts due to lots of high surf. But that's really about the extent of the impacts along the United States mainland as this system is going to be avoiding any land interactions with the United States. However, though, there's a hurricane watch that is out for Bermuda due to the incoming Imelda. And if you draw a line, I don't have it on here, but if we draw a line directly... This is going to be in intersecting Bermuda almost directly, even from the National Hurricane Center, which means pretty much at this point, there's really no avoiding this system uh, on Imelda if you're in Bermuda, if you're watching this. So keep that in mind that significant impacts are expected before extratropical transition happens somewhere in this uh, northern portion of the Atlantic in the next three to four to even five days. And now when we take a look at the chances of tropical storm force winds for Bermuda, there is clearly a 90 to 100% chance that you will see tropical storm force winds by early Wednesday morning. The good news about this is this is gonna be moving through pretty quickly. So tropical storm force winds will arrive pretty abruptly then hurricane force winds. So make sure again, you have your hurricane plan in place just in case if your local authorities and your local officials tell you to evacuate because this is gonna be moving in a hurry. And once it gets going, it is gonna be there in no time, which again is by the middle of this week, by Wednesday morning. 
again, with those very high likelihood chances of tropical storm force winds. But anyways, we weren't able to get to Hurricane Humberto as this is really not a big direct threat to Bermuda or to any land areas. This hurricane is already beginning to weaken at a rapid rate due to northerly vertical wind shear hitting it on the northwestern side. So therefore, Humberto is likely to quickly weaken over the next two to three days as it continues to move off towards the north-northwest and moves safely away from Bermuda. While we're all keeping an eye on um, Tropical Storm Imelda, which will soon become a hurricane as this system turns sharply off to the east-northeast and impacts Bermuda directly in the next two to three days. So make sure, again, anyone on Bermuda, you do have your hurricane plan in place as there are hurricane watches out for that island. Otherwise, if you did find today's tropical weather outlook and discussion on Imelda very helpful, detailed, informative, and life-saving, please don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit the bell notification icon if you haven't already and also please like the video and share this video with their family and friends on social media as always have a great rest of your monday afternoon and evening here i will keep you all updated if necessary if things change significantly on email this intensity and we may have to go live if necessary late tuesday night into wednesday so be sure you join in then as we track email the live if necessary